All right, five minutes after 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, kind of an overcast Thursday, but there's only a 20% chance of rain. That's just the weatherman just covering his own butt, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Galen Yunald is not on the phone. We'll cover for him to make sure that we get the message out about the importance of donating blood. If you don't donate blood, and if I don't donate blood, and if nobody donates blood, then guess what? There is no blood supply, and that means when blood is needed, that person who needs it will not live. That's the harsh reality of of that scenario. So the fact that we, you know, if you think about it, the blood banks, Life South as well as the other one, uh, One Blood, they are the the one reason, the one reason why we can have surgeries in our in our hospitals, et cetera. So. Um, if you get a chance, go to Life South, and if Galen calls in, he'll tell us where the blood mobile is. There is a website. It's lifesouth.org. Yes. Is that where it is? Uh, and also thank Penn Flooring and Palm Garden, because those two companies sponsor the announcement that I just made on Galen's behalf. Galen might call up and, and make the same announcement as well. But uh, Penn Flooring provides beautiful flooring, quality customer service. They have a showroom. You can check it all out at 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the McKay-Williams Bridge here in Ocala, and that's the bridge that crosses the railroad tracks on 17th, uh, just a few blocks from Pine. And then, of course, Palm Gardens. They're having a thing today, a special thing today. Uh, It's called Chats at the Garden. They have an attorney who will be there talking about the different um, documents that you should have in place as soon as possible, Mm -hmm. just in case you need to be uh, entered into an assisted living facility, a nursing home, uh, for rehab, you know, God forbid anything should happen and, and, and suddenly the state is making decisions for you, those papers would help somebody else do your wishes and if you of course if you died of course that's all part of it as well um so uh you go to that event today over at palm gardens it's a it's a free event and uh and there you go and you'll hear a commercial in just a bit that'll give you more details on that one mm-hmm. all right so so the uh one thing i want to say speaking of assisted living facilities i have a way to segue into the topic today uh, I used to work as an activities director at an assisted living facility here in Ocala. Mm-hmm. And when it came to around Halloween time, I had this idea to have a haunted room. And I, I decided I would take one of the rooms. Uh, at first, it was an extra room that we had at the facility. And then in the following years, it was the uh, activities room. Yep. And I wanted to make it haunted. But I was m- much younger than I am now, actually. and And I was a little bit... I wanted to stay away from the death theme of Halloween. Mm-hmm. I mean, Halloween shows, you know, skulls and and blood and, and, and death things. I thought, gosh, I want to make it scary, but I don't want the death theme. I don't want the tombstones. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't want that kind of stuff. So I thought, you know what is scary? A swamp. A swamp at night. Yeah. So um, I decided that my haunted room for Halloween would be the haunted swamp. Mm -hmm. instead of the haunted house. And so uh, Robin and I um, created these haunted swamps. And what we did is we hung up sheets (laughs) to serve as walls, Mm -hmm. and we literally made this this passageway, this this narrow passageway you had to walk through, and you would encounter creepy things, like an alligator head I had from one of these souvenir shops. Yeah, that was Uh, was cool. uh, Or or Spanish moss that was draped all over the place. Or, you know, we took... um, what do you call it, um, fishing line and hung it from the ceiling and you can't see it, but as you walk past it, it rubs on your face and you feel like you're walking through a spider web. And, mm-hmm. and of course, we had the, the lights out and, and the black lights on and it was creepy. We had creepy music and creepy sounds, but it was all about a swamp. It wasn't about death. And to me, it was maybe not as, well, it, it was somewhat scary, but it was, it was it was fun scary, but you weren't you weren't gored out of your mind by by seeing bloody faces and, and arms ripped off and, and some of the things that are so common in, in some of the uh, Halloween decorations you that know, you see today. Butcher knives stabbed in people and everything. Yes, so the, the topic I really had, if Galen had called in, and I'm, I'm going to do it anyway, would be, like, in his opinion, or in your opinion, Robin, or the listener's opinion, do we go too far? Do your neighbors go too far? Does anybody, or is there no limit to what you should be doing? You know, should you should you have a, a say-so? If, you, if your neighbor has a gory, gory display in their front yard for Halloween, should you be able to say, 
you know, you've crossed the line a little bit here, <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. This is a little uh-huh. bit too disturbing. Would you please, uh, you know, pull it back a little bit? Yeah. So with that said, I found some people who have done exactly that to their neighbors. Really? All of these people I'm going to tell you about had mm-hmm. Halloween decorations and decided that they wanted to uh, go a little bit over the edge and the neighbors had a problem with it. Mm-hmm. So the first one I'm going to tell you about is a guy named James Creighton. Okay. His grandmother passed away and for some reason that got, got put him over the edge and he decided to do some really creepy Halloween things. This was back oh. in, not that back, farther, in, in 2009, this is when this happened. Uh-huh. Uh, this is in England, so uh, just so you know where this is. Um, in his home, in front of his home in Steve, Stevenage, England, mm-hmm. um, he would have these displays from 2009 till about 2012. Uh, they weren't, weren't too bad. 2013 is when he started to go over the edge. Mm-hmm. Uh, his display was getting too gory. Oh. There was a disemboweled torso <gasps> that looked like it, you know, was real. Mm-hmm. Um, the police said that the display was too intense and it was frightening children. Now, he would charge people to walk through his yard because it was, I guess it was a large yard. You know, he could do this. And then he would, the money that he would get would go to a charity. And even the charity <laughs> said, mm-hmm. could you tone it down a little bit? It's a little too, it's a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so he, uh, he, he agreed to. And um, uh, anyway, so, but it, this is just one example. Uh, but by the way, when, he, when the news came out that the police wanted him to tone it down, he toned it down, but he got tw- triple the amount of donations simply because of the publicity. Oh, my gosh. So the nonprofit wow. he was trying to help, uh-huh. the charity he was trying to help, that's what they call him in England, charity. I guess in America we call them nonprofits. I'm not really sure what the non-profit difference is. Nonprofit and not-for-profit. And we do use charity as a generic term. Oh, here's another one. This is in Virginia, the state of Virginia. This is the, uh, the Reamer family, Leslie Reamer of Midlothian, Virginia Mm -hmm. had a bigger or has a bigger is better attitude when it comes to decorating for Halloween on her property she had a graveyard a zombie scientist who was holding his own detached head and of course a number of inflatable decorations Uh, it wasn't what bothered the neighbors most what got to them was the 2013 display that featured a recreation of an execution chamber that had a dummy with a sack over its head in a convict's uniform. Oh, what's wrong with these people? Um, Oh, that is so disturbing. Leslie Reamer said her husband spent hours working on the scene, which included a fuse box and straps for the electric chair. Uh, A neighbor said that they didn't like sitting at the red light near the Reamer's home because the children would ask uncomfortable questions about the body in the chair. Yeah. And uh, so they also were asked to... um, well, to remove that particular display. Mm-hmm. So, um, so I mean, do you, do you think if we have people who are in our neighborhoods that are putting up Halloween displays that are a little bit, just go over the edge, mm-hmm. I mean, would you walk up to them? Would you say, hey, you've, you've, you've crossed the line. This is a little bit too gory. Yeah. I yeah. think it all the time. Yeah. I think it all the time. I think that thing Lady Gaga did uh, was some kind of a TV show. I mean, mm-hmm. So what, what is she thinking? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's called the blood orgy or something. Yeah. So what? It's so what? There's sexy people with blood on them. That's awful. Why? Mm-hmm. Why is that entertainment? Oh exactly. gosh! I, and I like her, and I like her voice, and I think she's very talented. But I, I would, mm-hmm. I would encourage if I knew her to to not do those kinds of things. No, exactly, exactly. Do I have a phone call? No, I, I, th- I think we should be allowed because if we go to somewhere like Halloween Horror Nights or uh, the JC's Haunted House, you expect things like that. You know it's going to happen. And you don't take your children there. Oh, I see what you're saying, but uh, okay. Well, yeah, then, but, yeah, but then you know, you sort of, yeah. And I don't go to those things. No, I'm I don't not either. Really a fan of that. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. This brought back memories. Uh, my son now is 26, but I think he was about six or seven. And one of the local nonprofits in Muskego, in Wisconsin, put on the haunted bar. And I'd gone there before, and it was no big deal. So we took them afterwards, you know, you said, after you come out the bar and you, everybody sits down and gets hot chocolate. That's a nice family event. It was horrible. They had chainsaws going. They had fresh liver in buckets that they were holding up in dripping liver blood. Oh. I got my kid under there. He was screaming. He was trembling. We got out and 
and I, I, I don't know if he's ever gone at home to barn sense, but it was horrible. You know, it oh, was gee. Yeah, yeah, so you I did. Mean, they, I guess they should have warned you, but I mean, it was so, I mean, when you walk in and somebody's holding up livery, bloody stuff and chainsaws are roaring, it can scare you. Yeah. They should have warned you, yes. He didn't even want the hot chocolate marshmallows. He said, Papa, get me out of here. I want to go home. Get me to Christmas. Yeah, get me to Christmas. I like yeah. Christmas better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so sometimes they do go too far. They should really stress uh, that it is age appropriate. And it's not like today where you can go on Facebook and ask how, how is the haunted barn, you know, and people will tell you, don't take your kid there, you know. That's well, right that's today. true, too. That is one, one benefit of today. Yeah. Different, yeah. Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> I remember today when you talked about this, it brought back the nightmares of the haunted barn. <laughs> You guys have a great day. Thank you, Linda. All right, we'll take a little break. We will be right back. This is WOCA. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. For today, partly sunny skies, breezy and warm with a shower in spots. The high 82 to 86. Partly cloudy tonight. There may be a shower along the coast. Low 63 in a few inland spots, but closer to 73 at the coast. Tomorrow, times of sun and clouds and breezy with a stray shower along the coast, high 82 to 86. For Saturday, sunshine, some clouds, and a passing shower with a gusty wind, high 82 to 86. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm Joe Lundberg. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. Robin, want to come with me to Palm Garden for the next Chats at the Garden? Sure, when is it? Thursday, October 22nd from 2 to 3. Local attorney Shannon Mulkey will be speaking about the five most important documents we should all have in place. The Chats in the Garden programs at Palm Garden are such a great opportunity to learn and network. The public is invited and there will be refreshments. Palm Garden is at the corner of Southwest 27th Avenue and 34th Street. For more information, call 854-6262 for Palm Garden. Do you drink bottled water because you don't like the taste of your water or you suspect your tap water is unsafe? Not anymore. I went to SafewayWater.com. They're offering a deal you simply can't refuse. Test drive a brand new drinking water or whole house water treatment system for 30 days. And if you like it, rental rates start at only $19 per month. $19 per month? That's right. This is a limited offer, so call Safeway Water at 855-999-SAFE. Safeway Water. SafewayWater.com. Career Source Citrus Levy Marion brings together business and community partners, economic development leaders, and educational providers to connect employers with qualified, skilled talent, and job seekers with employment and career development opportunities. Tune in the first and third Wednesday of each month at 9:30 a.m. to Career Source Citrus Levy Marion and learn how they can help you. Hey, Matt, I know Sunrise Automotive does auto stuff, but I need some tires for my truck. Can you recommend someone? Uh, yes, I can. We do that. No, I mean, I need them installed and balanced and all that. Yep, yep, we do that. Well, my son needed his windows tinted. Yep, we, we do that. I need too. my seat replaced. Yep, yep, we do that too. I need a new roof line and a new spoiler and a new yep, truck. Yep, we can even do that too. Okay, okay, I get it. I suppose you can also do a radio show too, huh? Well, as a matter of fact, join me every Monday at 10 for auto repair with personal care here on The Source. Of course you do. 19 minutes after 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Thursday morning. Uh, Galen Yunold's not on the air with us. We don't know where he is, but I uh, hope he's doing well. And um, we are covering for him to make sure that the message gets out about the important role that we all play in making sure that there is a b- blood supply. So go to Life South on the boulevard right next door to the Cascades and uh, go online to lifesouth.org, find out where the blood mobile is. And, and if you get a chance, it takes about a half hour. You will save some lives. And if you think about it go through the hospital just remember the last time you walked through the hospital there probably weren't too many rooms you passed that did not have somebody receiving a blood product whether it was plasma or platelets or whole blood or whole blood and forgive me if i'm saying things redundant or that are not (laughs) any longer 
the, the words we use, but you know what I mean. The blood is being used all throughout that hospital, and there would be nobody getting it if nobody was donating it. Mm-hmm. So that, and, and the percentage of people who donated is very small. Galen tells us this now and then, how many people actually donate. Uh, it's a very small percentage that actually provide a blood supply. So, And every eight weeks is all you can do it. So, yeah, Well, that's of whole blood, right? You can do platelets every two weeks or yes. something. Okay. All right, so we're talk- speaking of blood, we're talking about um, whether or not uh, a, a homeowner can go too far in their decorations for Halloween and, and whether you should go up to that homeowner and say, you know what, you have crossed the line. Here's another one. Joe DeOria um, had on his front lawn a, a rabbit... Hang like a dead rabbit hanging from a tree. Oh! But it was not a real rabbit. It was the size of a human being. Oh! It was fake, but it looked real. The size of a human being. Gigantic fangs coming out of the rabbit. Blood all over the rabbit. Oh! And around the rabbit were decapitated, fake heads impaled on hooks. Zombie babies in cages <gasps> that were bloody. Um, they had sounds happening in the yard that were um, would make anybody cringe. Actual decorations in front of uh, Joe DiOrio's house in Brookline, Pennsylvania, included uh, dog cages, and inside each one had a ghoulish creature. Sometimes those creatures look like realistic babies. Some of them were animatronics. Oh, so this guy sick. put a lot of money into this. Yeah, but he's his proper property was littered with fake bloody. Limbs, arms, legs, fingers, all over the place. And the neighbors decided it was too extreme. Uh, and uh, so they, they went to him. They, he called himself the king of Halloween. Oh. I don't know. Does it go too far? It does. Does it, it go really too far? Does. And, and, it, and I guess you could make the point that if it was inside of a building and if you had a sign outside the building saying, look, if you go in here, don't. Don't be surprised to find some gory things because that's what this this is about. Yeah. But I mean, putting it in the yard where everybody can see, you got to live next to these people. Putting it in the yard. That, that you got to draw the line on. Uh, but again, it's private property. I mean, what do you say? Do you, do you say to somebody at Christmas time, "Hey, I'm I'm offended by that nativity scene"? Well, you better not. Oh, there you go. There you go. Yep, because there are some. Really but I mean, if you could say something, you know what I mean. I mean, when, where do you tell somebody on their private property that they've they've gone too far? Now that's a good point. Excellent point. Um, I guess the the well, how, what do you do? I mean, if you if you drive down the road, you could take another road. But what if you live on the road? What if your yeah. children walk past these things on their way to school, et cetera, and they've this like that's the only way they can go. Yeah, I'd have to say something. You know, would you would you go? Would you say anything? I would, because I wouldn't want my children to be upset. In in Parma, Ohio, um, there was a family named the Barrett family. They're still there. They started decorating their house for Halloween back in 2012 in a truly frightening manner. They used lifelike dummies to create grotesque scenes of torture and murder. Oh. This year, this year, right now. They have on their lawn a body nailed to an inverted cross with syringes stuck in its neck. You might have seen this in the news. Oh, thank God I haven't. Another dummy was bound with rope and wrapped in plastic. A third doll was childlike. Oh. And it was impaled on a spike and there was a sword stabbed into its throat. And these are in the front lawn. On the front lawn. No, I'd have to say something. I'll deal with deal with So what is I mean what time. I mean what do you what do you think about this? You can't lie. In the front, on the front lawn, naked, you can you can be the most beautiful person <laughs> physically in the world. Yes. But if you're naked, the police are going to come and say you can't be out here. Exactly. But yet you can have these things in your front yard. Yeah, you can advocate uh, uh, murder and mayhem and torture. That's what they're doing. I don't know. It. I don't know. Uh, here's another one. This is out of um, where's this one from? Oh, out of Dallas. This, this homeowner's name is James Falk, F A U L K, F A U L K. Um, let's see. In 2013, he thought the best way to scare people was to use a real life situation, specifically the Ebola scare that was rampant at that time. In front of his house, Falk placed biohazard barrels 
and his lawn was marked off with caution tape. Then he dressed up in a biohazard suit and walked around with a clipboard. He claimed it was all in good fun and meant to be and meant to be unsettling. Others argued that Ebola is a real disease and at the time there were cases of it in the Dallas area, as you might remember. Yes, I remember that. They thought that Falk was using that theme was in bad taste. Very much so. Wow. It kills people. Good morning. You're on the air. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, 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 I saw a, an interesting twist on the witch up against the utility pole. Um, the, the one that I recently saw, they put a cell phone in the witch's hand, and then there's a sign that says, no texting while flying, and the witch has slammed into the utility pole. Oh, well, that's kind of funny, actually. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that, that one, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm okay with that one. Yeah, thank you, Jim. Appreciate that. Yeah, but not the gory and the blood. I mean, I don't know. I mean, what, what do you what do you think you should do as a, as a neighborhood? Would you would you get together with your other neighbors and and knock on their door and say this is a little over the edge? You got this guy hanging upside down on a cross with syringes in his neck. You got the oh god. Yeah, I would because this this isn't like Christmas, like displaying the nativity scene. This is advocating murder and death um, here's and an, torture. There's another one in Brooklyn. Brooklyn, New York. Uh, according to the New York Post, there's a 52-year-old woman who lives there named Joyce Dragonowski. Um, her decorations were mutilated baby dolls. Oh. Some of them have knives stabbed into their foreheads. Others are skewered with various types of sharp objects. They have nails driven through their heads. Many are covered in, in blood and dismembered in some way. The neighbors did not like them, encouraged her to get rid of them. Mm-hmm. It does not say whether she did or not. It was in the New York Post. Here's another one. This is in uh, Mustang, Oklahoma. Johnny Mullins lives in Mustang, Oklahoma. Um... What, what would you do if you came walking through the neighborhood, you see a dead body on somebody's driveway and the garage door splattered with blood? Um, it was the decorations for Halloween. You call the police if you thought it was a dead body and there was blood in the area. Um, he created the described murder scene for, two, for Halloween 2013. The scene gave his neighbors quite a start and someone even called 911. The police and fire department responded and, of course, found that it was a dummy. Said he wasn't doing anything illegal. After police visited, he added another body, making it look like its head had been driven over by his truck. Wow. These people are sick. I mean, what kind of joy can they get in promoting deaths and mangles? I don't know. Uh, The next story is out of Riverside, California. The guy's name is Kevin Sudd. He first set up 12,000 lights on his house and synchronized the lights to music. His shows were half an hour long and did every and did one every weeknight and three on Saturday night using songs with a lot of bass. In 2011, the video of his synchronized pumpkins made the lights singing party rock uh, going viral. His house started to attract 2,000 people at night. Neighbors were upset because of the influx of people. Oh, this is a different reason for being upset. Yeah, this isn't blood and gore. This is music and light. The Homeowners Association banned Judd's light show in 2012, but Judd went ahead and kept doing it in 2014. It was shut down by police until he got a special permit to play the music. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so you have a law or, or, or regulations that don't allow you to do this, but there's nothing stopping you from putting these bloody and gory things on your sidewalks, yeah. I mean, on, on your front lawns. Yeah, exactly. I, it, I just don't get it. I just don't get it. I in, understand it. In Butler, New Jersey, there's a guy named uh, Matt. I guess we don't know his whole name. He decided to use his decorations to make a political statement. This year, on September 11th, way before Halloween. Yeah. He installed his Halloween display in his front yard at his home in Butler, New Jersey. The display contained President Barack Obama dressed as an ISIS member oh. with a bloody machete. Oh. Then he has a dummy dressed as an American soldier being hanged with a noose with a plastic bag over its head and an American flag tied around its neck. Oh. Finally, there was a burned corpse in a cage and there are bloody body parts throughout the display. Still on display. Oh. 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 Well, anyway, so if you have somebody in your neighborhood and they have gone over the line, 
it sounds like to me, you can say what you want, and they might voluntarily take it down, but it sounds like the law is the law. Yeah. And if it's too loud, the law can do something. Oh, but visually... And if you're naked, the law can do something. Yeah. But if it's bloody, gory, and upsetting people, that's, you're just going to have to live with it. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. Hillary Clinton in the hot seat again before the House Select Committee on Benghazi to answer questions about her time as Secretary of State. One that Trey Gowdy says, one area he wants to...